my name is Sam and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down and turn on the notification bell so you find out when I post new videos. So I realize it's actually been quite a long time since I've done a rambling librarian video, but actually it was something I was talking about with some friends and they were actually like, actually I didn't know all of this information you were talking about. This would probably be a good topic for you to do a video on your YouTube channel about because I guess just most people don't know this information. It's always something I've known because I like just out of curiosity started googling things when I was like I think I want to be a librarian but obviously not everyone knows that they want to be a librarian or learns or starts googling about a career that they don't want to go into. So I wanted to talk about people who things like maybe like maybe I'll title this something like myths about ebooks and libraries or something like that because I hear an awful lot of things like my library doesn't have any ebooks, their selection is crap, I always have to wait in line for books and it's you know like 30 people ahead of me for the one copy, yada yada yada, all that kind of kind of stuff. Just keeping in mind though my whole viewpoint is from the Canadian perspective so it might be different in the US but I feel like the general information about the situations of libraries is pretty similar like kind of globally in places that do have libraries. Not everywhere does have libraries and then there's some countries that are like extremely going to like the conservative mode like in the UK where or England at least where basically libraries like just there's no point in them and I actually have quite a few friends that are from Canada that are living in the UK right now for work and they still actually use their barcodes that they have for libraries in Canada to access resources because the libraries in, in England don't offer anything that they need which is kind of sad but in that long, big long spiel I want to talk about ebooks libraries. So first thing, library funding is across the board, really no matter where you go and look, library funding is declining. Despite the fact that staff wages are going up, cost of buildings are going up, patrons being served is going up, cost of resources is going up, uh, what else is going up? Cost of really everything is going up whilst library budgets are declining. For whatever reason, some areas it's you know, it depends how your bodies are, are funded. Some just like the tax dollars to go directly to the bank. Some of them you have to go through multiple government entities, get your funding. Some are like completely dependent on grants. Some of them are just staffed by volunteers and have no government funding whatsoever. It's totally up to, you know, each library situation. But over overwhelmingly, libraries funding has dropped and has continued to drop. So we have to start frantically looking in other places for more funding or ways to cut our budgets. So the first thing to be aware of is your library may have multiple platforms, which means they have to split their budget between each of the platforms. So there are tons of different ones out there depending on where you are. There are places like Overdrive, there are places like Cloud Library. In Alberta we have the Read Alberta eBooks platform, which is a government supported one. And then there is things like Hoopla, there's Axia 360 I think in the United States. Um, RB Digital has their own one. Like there's tons. So if your library has more than one platform, and there may be reasons specifically why they do that, then they have to split their budget between them. And sometimes they have contracts with them to say, this is how much money you should be spending or are required to spend on products this year from, you know, Cloud Library or RB Digital or whatever. Then you have just the overall cost of books, which once again are increasing over over time, especially in high demand books. There's really no rhyme or reason, it seems like, for the prices. Now you may think, but ebooks, they should be cheap. Like I pay 10 bucks for them, why doesn't the library? <laughs> I wish. I believe we were kind of explained in grad school. The logic behind it is that libraries generally are charged more for ebooks because publishers have the premise of like, well, if they're borrowing from the library, then we're losing people who would be purchasing it. So we charge you extra for the book. So something like Black Hearts, the ebook for you as just a member of the public may cost you, you know, six dollars on Amazon Kindle. For libraries, if we have to buy it off the platform, A, we have to make sure the platform itself offers it because some publishers will exclusively offer content to a certain platform. So places like, you know, Overdrive may have exclusive access rights to a certain publisher or, you know, places like RB Digital may get Canadian only content um, or they themselves are recorders. RB Digital, they do recorded books. So they themselves can say we're not selling, allowing any other company to sell this book. We've bought the rights, we've recorded it, and we're the only ones that are going to sell it. So they get to kind of play around with the overall cost of it because they're the only ones selling it. So in reality, the average buy to own a copy of an ebook for libraries, at least in my experience in Canada, is at bare minimum $60 bare minimum $60. So I had to pay $65-ish for this and then I got to pay $65-ish for the sequel Black 
Black Souls, and that's just the ebook. That's not getting into the audiobooks, and this is an own to buy to own copy, which I'll kind of explain that. So we live in this wonderful generation in 2018 where everyone wants everything right away. We don't want to have to wait and we want to access it without having to even wait in line, even if it's one person. I want my things right away. And we normally want to be able to binge, whether that's TV shows or books or anything like that. So there's actually a product called Hoopla, which kind of offers this. So patrons don't have to wait. They can just hit borrow and you get to borrow. It's awesome. Love the premise. Don't have to wait in line. It's it's on my iPad or iPhone or Android device, whatever. It's there and I can access it and read it or listen immediately. Sounds awesome, right? Hoopla is a pay per use model, which means every time you borrow something, your library has to pay. And once you return it, the library doesn't get to keep it. So if you borrow an ebook of Black Souls by Nicole Kastroman, it could cost your library, you know, $3.99. And then you return it, and then someone else borrows it for $3.99. And then someone else borrows it for $3.99. And someone else. And you see how quickly that can add up to well over $65. And at least when you spend the $65, you get to keep the ebook. But if you pay per use, you just keep paying and paying and paying every single time someone wants to borrow it. Which isn't a problem if it's something small or like a very small indie book where you know only one person borrows it and it's $1.99. That's not going to really like crush any libraries for the most part. But it's when people go there and 50 people in one day want to borrow a copy of The Zookeeper's Wife on audiobook. And it would cost, you know, $4.99. So $4.99 times 50. And once you all return them, we have to just keep buying them. So you can see as budgets are declining, that model gets more and more and more and more and more expensive as people want to have their things right away. And that is why libraries can't really afford to do kind of models with pay-per-use models. And I think the final thing in this long rant video, I'm sure I'll probably do another one about things that pop up, is the cost of metered access books. Now, this doesn't seem to be any a thing that anyone other than like librarians seem to realize. So there are publishers that will publish books as metered access. Now, the only time I've seen they're all basically ebooks. So audiobooks are, you know, they tend to run about a hundred plus dollars for libraries Canadian for a single copy, but you normally get to keep them at least. So, you know, I spend $100 on the audiobook for Crazy Rich Asians, and I always have that audiobook. I don't have to keep paying the $100. Whereas an ebook, something massive like Harry Potter is called metered access. So up front, they'll charge the libraries $40. And you're like, great, it's cheaper than $65. Works. However, it's a metered access title, meaning you pay $45 for it instead of $65, but you can only allow 52 borrows before we make you rebuy it for that $45. So you have to keep rebuying the book essentially. So up front, it's a cheaper price. However, you have to keep rebuying it. So it's always massive titles that are like that. Things like Fire and Fury that just came out, metered access. Things like Harry Potter, metered access. Percy Jackson, metered access. The Dear Canada series, metered access. Any massive YA release, really, metered access. So you can imagine your libraries, with their decreasing budget, have to continuously rebuy something as basic as Harry Potter every few months when people borrow. That is a book that will never be out of, out of inventory in libraries. And you remember that there's seven books in that series. So every single book in that series, you have to keep rebuying at 45 plus dollars a piece. Harry Potter is actually the only series, too, that also happens to have metered access on their audiobooks, which, once again, you can't really function as a library and not have Harry Potter available on your e-platforms. So you have to keep rebuying the ebook and the audiobook for Harry Potter 1, and then Harry Potter 2, and then Harry Potter 3, and Harry Potter 4, and Harry Potter 5. Oh, and then remember now the Fantastic Beasts books are out, so you gotta buy those. And then you gotta buy the Quidditch for the Ages game. That's like So the, you can see that this very, very quickly adds up, and this is just Harry Potter. That's hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for your library. Not even expanding their collection. That's just maintaining their collection. And keeping in mind that my generation are people that are mo more and more using the library, than the generation before. So you have more patrons that you have to serve. So you need now to have more copies to try and cut down on the wait times. I've seen comp like libraries that have, you know, 20 ebook copies of a book and each book, each copy of that book has like 50 plus people waiting for it. It's just not like we can't keep up with it, unfortunately, with the budgets that we do get. 
again, no matter where in the world you are, you just don't have the money. It's like a sinking ship with metered access and pay-per-use models. And unfortunately, publishers just make so much money off of that that there's really no reason, rhyme or reason, for them to change it at this point. I'm going to link a couple of things in the description down below. If you are angered and shocked by this information, there's a website run by the Toronto Public Library called Fair, Bo Fair Ebook Pricing for Libraries, which will actually show you on a rotating carousel. You know, you pay $5.99 for this John Grisham book. The library pays $120 for this John Grisham book for one copy. So that's somewhere that you could take a look at as well. I found this page that I will link down below as well that explains that these are the publishers that they've been dealing with that do metered access, meaning they're the ones that really put this sinking ship on the libraries that maybe you want to contact them and find out why they're doing what they're doing and that it really doesn't make sense and it's not sustainable for libraries. I don't know. Also talk to your libraries and find out if there's a way that you can help. Maybe they just don't know how much to allocate towards their ebook platforms or audiobook platforms, as well as they may just not know that you want to read those books. I hear time and time again from people saying things like, you know, my library doesn't have this on overdrive. I'm so annoyed. And my first question is, did you contact them and tell them that you want it? Because they, a lot of the times, libraries have now lost the ability to have a teen librarian for most places, unless you're massive city centers. So they don't have a teen librarian, and unless someone on the staff happens to read a lot of those books, they just may not know. They'll know, they'll get noticed to buy things like Children of Blood and Bone, but if you want something like, you know, Devils Unto Dust, they don't know. You have to talk to them and let them know that you want to read those books, and... Y that's, that's really all I can say. You need to talk to your libraries. A lot of libraries have an online request form of books that you want to suggest, or just go in and ask them, Can you? do you have someone in charge of collection development? Could I talk to them? Because I've been trying to read a certain book, and you guys just never, ever seem to have books that I'm looking for, and I would like to find a way that it would work. That's where I would start your conversation. I hope this didn't come off as like a rant or like a pity your library kind of thing, but... It's just general information that I find the public are not aware of, and they criticize libraries a lot on things like not having that collection or, like, you know, why do I have to wait so long for holds? We don't do it to spite you. We really don't. We would love to be able to give you guys all the books in the world that we could. We just don't have the funding a lot of the time, and the platforms are changing at the same time to make it unsustainable for libraries to maintain and develop collections. You have to either develop them and just abandon what you know, other than Harry Potter, the current collections, and then once they've run out of boroughs, you give up, or you try frantically to just upkeep your collection and then buy, you know, the odd large, large release like Children of Blood and Bone. Like I said, make sure to check the description box down below for all of the kind of information that I mentioned, and um, yeah. Also let me know in the comment section if there are certain topics about libraries that you'd be interested in knowing. I can give you some kind of general background information and perspective on them. And I'm always happy to help people like that. Make sure to check the description box down below as well for links to all of my social media. If you follow me, I will happily follow you 